In the story of the assassination and the murder of Umar ibn al-Khattab, anhu, when the news hit his son Abdullah ibn Umar, and he had heard of what had happened, and he heard that his father, radiallahu anhuma, he did not give a wasiya as to who's going to be the khalifa after Umar. When Abdullah ibn Umar heard this, he came. So his son said to him, when his father was dying, I have heard that the people are saying that you didn't choose a khalifa after you. And clearly, if there was a man who had sheep, and he was a shepherd and owner of sheep, and he was about to die, and he didn't leave someone responsible for his sheep, we're going to say about him that he is losing his responsibility. So what about the Muslims? He's saying to his father, how can you not leave a khalifa? So after this statement, Umar began to consider what his son had said. He thought about it, and he was just thinking about it, what his son had mentioned to him, this statement. And his son was there waiting for the answer from his father. So Umar said to him, am I responsible to that degree where I have to be in charge of the affairs of the people while I'm alive and while I'm dying, while I'm dead as well? So Allah gave him the ability to deal with this situation that was clearly heavy on him and difficult. So Umar said to his son and the people who were listening, if I were to choose a Khalifa after me and identify who he was going to be, then Umar uh, Abu Bakr did that. So I have someone who preceded me, Abu Bakr, he did that. But if I choose not to identify someone and choose someone to be the Khalifa, then the Prophet also did the same thing, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah did not choose as such a Khalifa. And I guarantee you, whatever the case is, Allah won't cause his deen to be lost. He said, when I heard that from my father, and he mentioned the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, given the choice, Abu Bakr, he made a Khalifa. And Rasulullah didn't choose a Khalifa. He said, so when I heard my father mention that the Prophet didn't choose a Khalifa, he said, I knew at that point he wasn't going to choose a Khalifa. This, what happened with Ibn Umar Ikhwani, is a lesson for us, a minhaj lesson, a lesson in minhaj. And that it goes to show how the people of the past used to make the ta'zim of the nasus. Abdullah ibn Umar, when he looked at what his father said, and he said Rasulullah didn't do something, and Abu Bakr didn't do something else, and he knew that his father was going to do what the Prophet did, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So for us, this is an example of how you make the ta'zim and magnify the nasus of the kitab and the sunnah. We can see that Umar, radiallahu anhu, he had a choice. And in his choice, he could have done either one in his choice. And he would have been not blameworthy. It would have been praiseworthy. So there was some ta'addud, uh, multiple opportunities. If he did this, no one can blame him. He did that, no one can blame him. But when it was a case of one of the choices being doing what the Prophet did, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and oh, not Allah. doing what someone else did, although it was permissible, the fact that Umar chose what the Prophet did, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, shows the importance, how they used to make the nasus, what the Prophet said and what he did, and they made it over everything else and paramount nothing uh, parallel to it. And this despite the tremendous level of Abu Bakr as well. It's another factor. Abu Bakr has a high position, but he chose the one whose position is higher than his. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that the one who was la muwaffaq, you know, Allah give you tawfiq. May Allah make you successful. The one who is not successful is the one who doesn't look at the scholars who make the ta'zim and magnify the text the one who doesn't look at them, but he looks away from them and doesn't respect them. He's the one who doesn't have tawfiq. 